the one video that I actually did want to talk about before you did this one yesterday was uh, prepper anxiety. And I thought that was a really interesting subject because it is something that we all, you know, whether it's, you know, built into us in the first place uh, and that's why or that that kind of lends itself to preparedness or we're looking at all this crap. We're looking at all this bad stuff. We're looking at everything that can happen. And it makes us, you know, some of us just want to go into our shell uh, and all that. Explain what you were talking about. You were taking some questions from people in that video, right? Yeah. Uh, well, it started as a conversation within uh, within our Discord. And, uh, you know, I just figured that it would be an, a great opportunity to address it because lots of times when people don't talk about the things that, that, uh, that we should be talking about, they just kind of get dusted over and it's like, oh, look at this piece of gear that I bought or uh, my plan is to do this and what, look at my radio and things like that. But they don't actually think about the, the intangible qualities that are necessary to, to persevere, you know, in, in, a, in a, a, what, a, what I call a crisis scenario, um, you know, and uh, it's, it's, it was just a conversation that started and then, you know, as usual, everybody joined in, which was great. And then we just kind of had to make it was it was my intention to make people realize that anxiety is fear and we're going to have it. It's actually part of our nature as preppers. We don't know it. And we 90 percent of the time I don't I don't prep because I'm scared. I prep because I, I'm, I'm not scared. And and it's and it's like, OK, dude, listen, you clearly failed, you know, high school psychology. You know, because anxiety is fear and everybody has fear and you have two choices. You can either turn it into courage or you can fall to it, you know, you, and that's just the way it happens. But you have to realize uh, and admit that it's there. It's like it's like a 12 step process. You know, uh, some people know what that is. Others don't. But the first one is admitting that you have a problem. And the problem is, is that fear is fear is the mind killer. If you know that movie. You know, uh, and, uh, you know, fear is it's it's generally broken down, you know, as far as as far as preppers go, you know, fear is generally broken down into like bas basically like five things that I can think of. And, you know, one is the fear of the unknown. Uh, the other is uh, a fear of not being prepared enough. Uh, uh, then then an odd one, the fear of being ostracized, you know, because uh, you're a crazy prepper, you know, um, and then some of the basic ones like uh, the fear of societal collapse. Uh, and then eventually the fear of being targeted. We all, if we've been in this game long enough, we know about the werewolf preppers, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, those those are basically the five ones that that I think about, and then I kind of focus on when people talk about anxiety, you know, and just just the goal to to try and help them out. So yeah. that's what that video is really about. Yeah, and it makes a lot of sense because if you, you the the first off acknowledging that 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 does exist and that you do need to address those different things because if you don't, if you go in thinking you're Superman and thinking that you're 100 percent prepared uh, for everything that's going to come your way no matter what, bring it on, kind of the Arnold Schwarzenegger type thing. Good luck. It's not gonna. It's not Hollywood. <laughs> it's not gonna work out that way. But if you go in with that mindset of understanding um, how things. Uh, may actually realistically uh, evolve or or whatever. I think you've got a much better uh, chance at getting through that stuff and sort of, you know, embrace those feelings, that stress and yeah. that and kind of and and it's different for a lot of people, I suppose. Some people are really good under those pressure type situations. Some mm -hmm. people are not. And I think if you're one of those people that are not, uh, there are classes and things that you can take, uh, you know, active, not, I don't want to say active shooting, but ad, active shooting, I suppose, drills, uh, yeah. first aid classes where they actually put you in the middle of it. Those, those things that get your adrenaline pumping and, and put you in those pressure situations. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a way to kind of feel how that that's going to go. And then you can, you, you'll have a little bit more confidence, I think, uh, and be, be a little less stressed out about those situations because honestly we're always stressed about you know like you were talking about the unknown anything we do whether it's prepping or not you're always kind of stressed or you, you i i tend to anyway i'll overthink the crap out of stuff <laughs> before i even go into it um and and it's usually nothing like that so and i think prepping is the same way and we do that all the time with all the different disaster scenarios and all the different you know i need this or what am i going to do i've got to have that but i don't have the money and uh, mm -hmm. just the, the prepping itself leads to so much just being stressed out. And I think we need to just kind of take a, take a step back and just go, Hey man, you know what? 
I, I can do what I can do. I'm going to survive what I can survive, do the best I can. And yeah. Uh, but that's that's kind of easier said than done sometimes. Yeah, and and there's actually there's actually a drill. You know, we were it's it's one of the things. Um, there, so we we were we were actually talking about this on the live stream today, and I told him I didn't really want to talk much too in detail about it because I wanted to save most of it for for today's show. Uh, and um, so one of one of the things that you can do is called mental visualization, and in People can't, not everybody can afford to go do a, uh, you know, a, a first responders class, you know, to take an EMT class or just basically take two breaths without having to work 20 hour days. Yeah, Some people yeah. just don't have the time or inclination to do it, you know. Uh, and um, so one of the things that I tell people to do and because the way, our, the way our brains are wired, we can trick ourselves into believing that we know how to do stuff. We do it all mm -hmm. the time, but when, when it comes down to doing it, we kind of freeze up because we didn't go through the visualization process. Uh, it's, it's actually a technique that's used by the Blue Angels. Uh, and what happens is, is before they actually get in their planes to either do a training flight or to, to do a show, they all sit down at a conference room and the leader does all of his speaking and they have their hands on the table. They're holding the joystick in their hand. You know, they're, they're doing the hand motions that they're going to do in the air. And then what they'll do is all the commands are done. They're all sitting there. It's actually kind of awesome to watch. And they're all sitting there doing this stuff with their eyes closed, sitting in a conference room. And that way, when they get into the cockpits and go do these things, it's all, it almost all turns into muscle memory. And what they're doing is they're through, through mental visual, visualization, they're actually training their brains to do things that they've never done before. They have to do that before they go fly for the first time with the Blue Angels. So the technique does work. And you can do the same exact thing. Okay, so if I close my eyes, I'm going to visualize how am I going to start a fire? Well, I'm going to reach into my pack and I'm going to try and file, find a lighter because that's the smartest thing to do. And if that doesn't work, I'm going to do this. You see what I'm saying? You can mentally train yourself to do stuff you've never mm -hmm. done before. And that creates a, a, a sense of muscle memory. And that can actually take away from the fear of what you're doing. Yeah. 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 So if you can't take those classes and uh, I think uh, silver lining said, uh, oops, chat jumped on me. I got the wrong comment there. Uh, silver lining said, where are those classes? Um, I've got a, a guy coming on the, the, the show next week who is a firearms instructor. Um, and he's going to talk about that. Um, like you were talking about some of them, if you just don't have the money, some of them could get, can get kind of expensive. Uh, somebody in the chat also said FEMA. Uh, you can go to, uh, you know, take some stop the bleed courses for for real. Uh, not, it's not too bad. Uh, I think for pretty cheap and stuff like that. But doing what you were talking about, uh, you need to kind of train yourself on what to make sure you're doing it the correct way. But yeah, you can do it yourself, and that that goes into the the drills and the planning that we do as preppers and, you know, whether it's a bug out drill, whether it's a fire drill, whether it's, you know, some sort of other drill, we get, you know, we get used to doing things and we understand how those are going to go. So yeah, it doesn't necessarily need to be, uh, it'd be better if you had an instructor to kind of tell you what you're doing right and doing wrong, but it doesn't necessarily need to be that way uh, to kind of help you at least give you a little bit of confidence, right? Saying, Hey, I've, I've done this a couple of times. I, I think I know what I'm doing. Oh yeah, um, most definitely, most definitely. Yeah, you know it, it, it. That's right up there with tourniquets. You know, I mean, unless you've actually trained to use a tourniquet, you're gonna be like, "How does this really work? Is it set up correctly? You know, uh, am I doing it right? You know, God forbid you have to use a tourniquet on yourself and you have it set it up correctly, or even practice putting one on. You know, so it it does it does help. You know, it's all about that that training that most preppers never do, but they you know if they would just take. 10 minutes out of their day, just write it down someplace. So today I'm going to, today I'm going to practice putting my tourniquet on and setting it up and putting it where it belongs. Yeah. Yeah. Check mark. You're done. And that creates that thing in your brain that says I can do that. Yeah. And arguably that's more important than a lot of the supplies and everything. And I, I say this all the time, uh, but that, that type of, those types of things are going to get you or, or going to, they're going to get you through situations um, a lot. I don't want to say better or a lot. I don't know exactly how I want to phrase this, but um, they're going to get you further through situations. If you understand how everything might evolve and if you understand how to do things rather, you know, if you have a survival knife, that's fantastic. Right. But if you don't know how to do anything with it, 
Uh, all you've seen is like the Rambo movie, and that's that's how you could use your knife. You know, it's it's about that good for you. Uh, yeah. You know, to point at somebody and tell them to get away from me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh.